Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. If you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the little button for the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up another video. Well, I don't mean to sound whiny, but I'm cold. And we got a, we got a propane heater going over there. And, and if it sounds like I'm not leaving any gaps in my speech, it's because if I don't do this right, that thing will take over on the audio system and it's all Sorry. over. Yeah, it's over my head. I'm a motorcycle mechanic, man. I don't know that stuff. Anyway, um, Mike and I decided on Saturday to go get a pizza a couple of towns, two or three or four towns from here. Yes. So I fired up my shovel head, which I had not fired up in a while. I'd been busy with the, with the knuckle, and, and I hadn't really done anything with the shovel. And I fired it up, and it sounded a little funky. And then I went down and got some extra gas, and the old gas that was in there really stunk pretty bad, and that kind of irritated me. But anyway, we took off, and the, and the gas tanks both started leaking. I filled them up at the station, and then they started leaking, and I'm going... You know, I, I tell everybody else how to winterize this stuff, and I kind of like failed her. So we went over to, to our buddy Kenny's shop, and and he didn't have any gas cap gaskets. So I took a couple off of used caps that he had, yep. and I got her to seal up, and we took off. And gee, you know, she wanted to idle up and down the scale, and when we were going fast, she was fine. I'd screw it on, and I mean, it was like she was shot out of a can, and we were having a good time. Yeah, but she smelled different. Well, she stunk is what she did, and that was the gas. But anyway, so I realized that some of the things that I profess, I'm not necessarily doing. I'm not being, I'm not being really good to her. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the routine things you do on an SU carburetor once in a while. And by, by routine, it's just general maintenance. You know, you don't, we're not going to rebuild it. We're not going to go through the whole thing. What we're going to do is the routine stuff. So we're going to get into that right now. Oh, boy. Well, it's not a, not a big deal. It's just, like I said, it's just routine. This is old-style stuff. By the way, that pizza is that good enough for that trip. Oh, that pizza was awesome. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Pizza is yeah, and then there was all the guys in the bar afterwards. But yeah. that's all right. Yeah. That was all good, boy. That was fun. Anyway, uh, this air cleaner, when I when I I had another air cleaner, and I kind of tore it up when I stacked up the bike several years back, and I pulled out a K and N element that I had in stock. I don't know what it was intended for, but it was a good size, so I made the back plate from a template I had laying around, and that's how this whole thing happened. And I had a nice big cover on it that was off of an Evo, and it looked really nice. And then I thought, you know, I could really, I could really get some more air into this thing, so I drilled a couple holes in that cover. I think it's hanging over there on the wall somewhere, and then I... I realized that really helped. I could feel the difference. Oh, yeah, I see it right. Yeah, but you remember that. Remember that? It was like, there. And, I, and I said, wow, that, that, that's working better. And what happened was the more holes and the bigger I drilled them, the mm -hmm. faster this thing got. <laughs> so finally, I just took the whole cover off and said, let's see if that makes any difference. And it did, so it never got a cover back on. It has this, and this is a plate off of something that was in my parts room. Actually, it's off of a Volvo boat engine that I... Yep. Yeah, I had a, I've got a pair of them, and no, you can't have the other one. Okay. i got a set myself. Yeah? Yeah. Volvo, uh... Well, that's the, the motor came in with the Volvo. Oh, okay. Well, this was, like I say, a Volvo boat engine, and the rest of that air cleaner, they were spark arresters. Yep. They're pretty neat. Yep. Somebody gave them to me in my old shop a long time ago. Anyway, so, so I kind of made up my own air cleaner out of all this stuff, and uh, I've been real happy with it. Okay. I was really proud of myself for the backing plate that I made.
I think I went over to the metal shop and, and bought a piece of aluminum and Okay, we'll have this off in a second here. I do love this SU carburetor. You know, I've 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 heard people complain about them, and I find that the people who complain about them don't know anything about them. <laughs> I mean, they just and it's like really. Choose the way it goes. People complain about things they don't understand. I guess there's not much to understanding these. You know, they okay. Well, get the element off of here. There it is, the element of surprise, and it's not going back on until I can wash it oh, out, yeah. too. Okay, and let's see here. I was really proud when I made that. Yeah, I love it. It's uh, I uh, took a hacksaw and took several cuts, and when I got them all done, then I fired up my belt sander and held it and spun it on the belt sander and made it perfectly round, and it is perfectly round. Yes, it is. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That stuff was dripping out of there. Okay, routine maintenance on an SU carburetor. You don't really need to pull it off and go through a whole bunch of stuff. Ah. All you really need to do is open it up, and a little bit of cleaning, and a little bit of lubing, and she's done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen me do this or. But anyway, here it goes. And the heater's taking over. Is it? Yep. Do I need to talk for a minute so that it. Uh... One of us. Okay, I'll talk. And, uh, all right, so there it is. One of the things I did, oops, I dropped two of them, didn't I? Yes, you did. All right, I don't know where they went, but I'll get them before I put, uh, put this thing back together. Oh, there they are. there it is, over there. Let me run over and get it real quick. Okay, let me explain it, okay? All right. Please. All right. Okay. Let me get this from my hands. All right. All right, we've got it open. This is your garden variety SU carburetor. This thing was, was prepped. Uh, in other words, it was originally int intended for, I believe, a Mark IV Jaguar. Um, you'll always hear carburetors listed in different sizes for how much they can actually take in. And this is an inch and three quarter or it's 44 millimeter, which is about the same. Wow. So it's a big carburetor. Um, it's not the biggest, I th is it? No, no. They, well, that's what the, that's the biggest they ever sold through their catalog. There was actually a two inch. Oh, wow. And well, it's it's a neat thing if you got a big enough motor to use it. Uh -huh. If I build a great big motor, I got a buddy's got a couple of brand new ones uh -huh. that he's had sitting on the shelf for about a hundred years. And uh, like I said, if I build a big inch Harley, a really big one, I'd I'd be trying to talk him out of one of those two inches. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what it would be worth. But anyway, they're they're. I, I don't know of any carburetor that makes more power than an SU, and I'm sure as soon as I say that, people are going to write in and say, oh, you're full of crap, yada, yada, yada. I'm telling you, these things will really flow. And I got in a race um, in Arizona with this thing one day. A uh, buddy of mine and I were going to Phoenix, and we were on the freeway, I can't remember what town that is. Anyway, it's a long grade to get there, and it was a long ways, and we were talking by the side of the road, and I said, well, we got a ways before we get into whatever the heck town that was, and 
I said, I'll tell you. He says, well, he says, I'll beat you there. And I said, I will be halfway through my first cup of coffee by the time you walk into the bowling alley there where we're going for coffee. And anyway, we took off. And he had a pretty hot Evo. He had some, some really nice, he had some, I think he had some Screaming Eagle heads. And he had doctored his carburetor all over. Anyway, point I'm getting at is I blew him off, okay? And I mean, I blew him off good. And, and it was such a long race, you know? You don't normally get in a drag race that goes on for several miles. But yeah. anyway, I was halfway through my coffee, the first cup. Anyway, so when I got home, a few days later, I called Dave Mackey, who had done my heads and all that. I mean, yeah, I had it pumped up pretty good. Yeah. And I called Dave and I said, you won't believe this. I said, I have no idea how I was able to outpower him on that hill all those miles. And I said, he had more than enough goodies to do it. And he said, are you kidding, Mike? He said, I've seen your motor. <laughs> now, Dave used to run. Dave set all his world records, I think, with an SU. Oh, okay. With, with SU carburetors. And anyway... He said, let's see, he said, you've got uh, twice the, the amount of uh, gasoline in your, in your float bowl, and you've got a great big pet cock on there with a great big hose. And he says, you just outfueled him, that's all. Ah. So, uh, so they really do work. Now, if you look at this, at this section here, what that is, is a float bowl extender. There's tw twice the normal amount Oh, yeah. Of fuel in that float bowl. Yeah. Okay. Now this is just. There's one main circuit. The only other circuit there is a is an enrichner. Oh, where's that at? This is the enrichner over here. You set the enrichner, let the bike idle on it till it warms up. Mm -hmm. As soon as you hit the throttle, the enrichner is off. Okay. And that's all there is to it and to that's starting a, it. A slight this yeah. is, let me finish with what I'm doing here. This is, this is the uh, tickler. And this right here at the end of the tickler right here is the float vent. So what happens is the air to go into the float chamber so that the fuel can leave, air taking the place of it, goes up this tube. Now, when we want to tickle it, in other words, we're going to give it a couple of prime shots, we can lift the piston with this little piston lift over here, okay, and then you hit this to give it a couple squirts. So I can show that just for fun here. I don't know if there's gas all the way to it. Yeah, but you can see it. I think so, yeah. Yeah, it goes right up above the needle, Yeah. and there's the fuel. I can smell it. Oh, yeah. Does it smell bad? It don't smell right. Well, then we're going to get it out of there. Well, anyway, so what we want to do is we're going to clean this piston, okay, and the chamber. And that's the routine maintenance I was speaking of. So we loosen, we take this cap off the top, which is no big deal. And a lot of people say, well, how much oil do I put in there? Well, this is not a British car. Regardless of what this carburetor was originally meant for, mm -hmm. this is not a British car. And all we need to do is just have a little coating of oil in there. We don't need to go running a bunch of oil in it. Oh. That's not a good thing on a bike. Okay, now I'm going to take the throttle cable off. Wow, that was easy. Well, yeah. Yeah. And now... We're going to take these three screws out. One. Two. There, you know, it may be clean enough, maybe just fine, but if I look at it and lube it, I'll feel good about it. So that's what we're going to do. And there's one more screw back here. And once you get used to it, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, when nobody was looking here, I gotta be honest, I'm a little, my tank mounts a little too close to this carburetor. 
So that's why the seat is off and the dash is off, is because I lifted this tank up just a little bit so I could get this dome off of here. Ah. Okay, so here is the third screw. It's out of there. Now to get this off of here, you lift the piston up with your finger. And slide it right out of there. And that's how we do that. Now let's see what else we got in there. Yeah, there's nothing in there to look at though. I mean, it's all clean. It may be smells bad. That's the old gas. Yeah, that gas. And the solution to that is to go for a ride. Oh. You know, I mean, uh, if it had just warm up a little bit. Well, that snow in our backyard don't help. Well, it's a little bit interesting here to look at this while the top is off. We can see right here. That's the this, is, this is the little lift button. Mm -hmm. So you can lift that piston up. Yeah, it's a little funky there. It's, I, this bike does not like to sit around, and I shouldn't let her do that. It's my fault. Mike, what is that? Cut off rubber tube right there by the tickler. Cut off rubber tube. Or is it, no, no, that's not a cut off anything. Oh, that's, oh, it's okay, metal. what that is, what that is, mm -hmm. is, Sorry. excuse me, this is the way we raise and lower the jet on the needle. Oh. Okay, this is to richen and lean it out. So the needle. So the, the orifice that goes over this needle, because mm -hmm. it's a tapered needle. So if we screw this thing in a little bit, mm -hmm. the mixture gets richer. We do it out, the mixture gets leaner. Nice. And it really is because I keep a little screwdriver in my saddlebag for that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really fun. I, when I used to go on, uh, well, like going to Sturgis on I-70, you go, you take I-70 and, and you go all the way through Utah and then you, you get into, uh, what do you call that, where it all comes together there in Colorado. Uh, <laughs> I'm not remembering anything I'm not tonight. I'm remembering it either. I but anyway, yeah. yeah. Grand Junction. Yes. You get into Grand Junction, anyway, you take I-70 and you go through the Rockies and I love that ride. Yes, sir. And then you get to, uh, you get to the Eisenhower Tunnel. Now, the Eisenhower Tunnel, that's, I think that's Loveland Pass, and it's like 14,000 feet above sea level. Now, everybody's got fuel injection now, so everything's compensating, but nothing used to compensate for you. It was nothing. You'd get up there, and you'd be running so rich, it was just ridiculous. You, yeah. couldn't, you couldn't get anything to move, you know? <laughs> and, I, and I mean, I, what I used to do is with an SU, I'd take my screwdriver, you know, every time I, I stop for gas, I'd lean it out about a quarter of a turn. Nice. And I'd go over the top of that pass, you know, wide open. <laughs> and everybody's doing like 60 miles an hour, and you're going past them like they're going the other way. Anyway, that's fast enough to talk about, but it sure is fun yeah. from, uh, from the top of that pass into Denver, yes, wide sir. open into Denver. You know, there's a, it's a grade about like that and about four, I think it's about 40 miles from, yep. from the top of the pass down into, uh, down into, and it's always raining over the top of that pass. Yeah. Yeah. Always rains. Every, you always get wet. It's just the way it is. <laughs> just the way it is. Anyway, in tuning an SU, and this thing has uh, been tuned within an inch of its life, you, uh, you have to get the appropriate needle in there. When you buy these carburetors, they come with like three needles, and so you can use the one that you want. Yeah, I'm just wiping this out. It's not really bad. I don't see anything bad about it. And uh, how, uh, how do you know which needle to choose? Well, it's either running rich or lean. You want to go richer or leaner. Or leaner or richer, start or in something. The middle and, uh, well, yeah, start in the middle and work out. No, that's it's, it's you know, but it, but it's it's explained very clearly in the directions. Yeah. That's why I tell everybody to call Ben at, uh, oh, American, All American. Oh man, I feel bad now. Anyway, I always tell everybody how to find that stuff from Ben because he's now carrying these, because there is no. Uh, um, 
SU? Well, yeah, SUs always came from, uh, uh, what's the belt drive, people? Rivera, Primo, they always came from Rivera. And I mean, I did business with Rivera forever. And they were a wonderful company, but anyway, they're not around anymore. Yeah. And, uh, and Ben at, at American, whatever the heck it is, do I have a card on the wall here? I did. I did have one out here, but I don't see it. And now I'm gonna have to tell everybody, get back to everybody on that, because he's got instructions, he's got everything. That's Ben Cudon, K-U-D-O-N, at American, whatever it is. Anyway, so this is clean enough now, and uh, see, this goes up and down in there. Anyway, you get the appropriate needle and you get the appropriate spring. There's all different color springs and they're all different ounces of, of tension on them, uh -huh. and that affects all of that. And when you get it right, there is nothing like it. And it really, with the instructions, it's no big deal to get it right. It's really not hard at all. And uh, like I said, the only people I can think of that can't tune them are the people that don't have the instructions. Because that instruction sheet covers it all, and it's really simple. I've seen yeah. it. I've seen oh, it. yeah, it's a yellow one. I've always got, always got one out here somewhere. I think there's one probably about a foot or two from your arm. It's under there. Is there the big folder in there? Is the big folder there? No, the big folder's back in the cabinet. It's in the cabinet. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so this is all clean. I'm happy with it. So what I'm going to do now is, this is Marvel Mystery Oil. Uh, you can use... Uh, Were you expecting company? I don't think so. My phone's turned off, so I can't go look. Well, so's mine. <laughs> Whoever they are, yeah, you know, I'll bet it's somebody taking the kids to basketball yeah, practice. Our friends don't boom music. No, they don't usually do that. Boom. Anyway, boom what I did, what I did is I just put a little bit of like a wipe in there. Uh -huh. And this thing just, listen to that. See? Yeah. And that's it. So... I'm pretty happy with it. It's fine. I can uh, polish it later. But spring goes in like that. And this goes in there like that. And you know, they recommend doing that every couple, three months. Yeah. Just, and I always have. It's just that uh, lately I've been kind of sidetracked on a bunch of other things. And it's cold. Anyway, and this piece right here lines up with the piston okay okay so get back out of my way a little bit well that's really uh not lining up like it does No, but thank you. There it is. Yeah, you have to be very careful to drop the needle down into that jet. There it is. And there it is. Darn it, this is okay. This and then we're going to go like this. Put this cap back on here. Make sure it goes on. Now on a British car, there's a stem and a piece down there that goes with all the oil and stuff that goes in them that we don't have to think about. So we just take that part out of it. And a lot of SUs, they generally come with a plastic plug here at the top. Somehow I managed to get a metal chrome one. Nice. Yeah. And that, uh, that's an accessory too, that uh, float bowl extender. Which really helps it, huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, if you're gonna 
you know, if you're going to go out and play racer, there's certain things people don't think about. Exactly. You know, well, you, okay, I got my carburetor is going to flow enough. My motor is big enough. Okay. Are you really going to flow enough fuel? You know, it's like one of the first things I used to throw away on a Harley was the, was the, uh, was the uh, petcock. Because they didn't flow enough. Mm. You get in a really good race and you're running a whole lot of fuel to that thing. That petcock's got to flow enough to the carburetor. Carburetor can just suck it dry. Yeah. And uh, sure proved that with this one. Yeah. Numerous times. And, and they are vacuum operated. The way this thing actually works is the butterfly opens and when the air sucks through the carburetor, it causes the piston to lift. Okay. And the further it lifts, the richer the, the, the more fuel it runs in. It pulls that pin out of the orifice. It does the whole thing. And I mean, and it really, really works. And interestingly enough, they make terrific mileage. So the theory that they're operating on is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, we've got it back together. And uh, I'm going to do one more thing that i got to show because I think there's a chance that the formula for the fuel got changed since I put gas in this thing last. Oh, yeah. We get that around here every year. Yeah, I keep And I suppose that. it's other places, too. No, but what not. happens is you get the formula changed on the fuel, and all of a sudden you're out of tune and you're wondering why. Yeah, from winter to summer fuel, yeah. Now, the thing is, I've got the right needle in it. I've got the right spring in it. It's happy. Yeah. So... What I want to know is where did I have that needle set? So the way you do it is in order to get the needle in the halfway position, because you can only turn it so far and get a change. So what you do is you bottom it carefully, and then you take it out six full turns. That puts you right in the center of your adjustment. Two turns in either direction is as much change as you're going to get. So if you get it, if you get it, if you put it in two full turns and it's still not getting enough fuel, then you need a richer needle for it. Ah. Okay, and the same thing in the other direction. So what you want to do is find out where it is. Now I'm going to get this screwdriver here straight up and down. Okay, so there's a half, there's one, there's one and a half, there's two, there's two and a half, there's three, there's three and a half, there's four, there's four and a <laughs> four and a quarter. Okay? Four and a quarter. So you can see I've gone in a little richer than the center part. Four and a quarter. Okay. Good enough. So now I know where I'm at. Four and a quarter. Okay, four and a quarter. Let's see, four and a quarter. Okay, there's four and a half. Five, five and a half, six. Now we'll take it in one. There's a half, there's one, one and a half. There we go, that's right where we were. Okay, so half. One, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, you no, know, let's just stay right there, four, four and a half. Okay, done. Okay. Made me happy. That puts me pretty much where I was, and it's a good place to start because uh, I'm going to take this thing out and run it probably tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Okay, that pretty well does it for now. I mean, I can put the air cleaner back on and all that, but I think we'll, uh, we'll wait on that. I'll do it. And I want to do a little more cleaning up here, but I just wanted to show how this thing works. Really not much to them. 
Okay, what else did I want to say? Okay. Events, events, Paradise Roadshow, Palm Springs. That's January 26th and 27th. Okay, that's Palm Springs, the Ace Hotel. And then, let's see, Long Beach Swap Meet, Southern California Swap Meet at Long Beach at the Veterans Stadium. And that's January 28th. Oh, we got a busy weekend. Yeah, that one will be busy. We're going to go to both. Well, yeah, but this is Do one you of have my the address for Ace, the Ace Hotel. I don't have it here. It's on the internet. It's not hard to find. Just, just look up Paradise Roadshow, Palm Springs. It's on One Eleven in town. Yeah, well, everything's on One Eleven <laughs> down there. Yeah. Anyway, let's see. David Mann Chopper Fest, February eleventh. That's, yeah, that's going to be fun. And, you know, I've even in my comment section, I've gotten a few notes from people like, hey, we're going to see you there. Yes, sir. And these are people from out of state. So they're really realizing the importance and the beauty of that show because it's really worth going. I hope we get to ride there. I guess we can. I mean, you know, unless uh, we're going to be carrying a bunch of stuff, oh, I really yeah. don't know. So, you know, it's hard to say. Anyway... What else? I don't know. We got t-shirts, t-shirts on the uh, on the wall over there. And and anyone who wants a t-shirt, all you need to do is go to our website, which is pacificmike.com, and in the upper right-hand corner it says t-shirt store. And click on that and you can order t-shirts. So we have those t-shirts up. I'm even wearing a t-shirt yeah, from Yeah, baby doll. Yep, yep. And anyway, that's that one and our little insignia here. And what else? Let's see. You can order the shirts and we also have baseball caps. Can you see that black hat against the t-shirts there with the, uh, with the blue logo? Give me a second. I moved too fast. There we go. Oh, yeah. And the logo is embroidered. It's really a nice baseball cap. It's a beautiful blue. I don't know why it's not coming out right. Well, it looks there good. It looks good from here. I love that blue. Anyway, so basically that's about it for now. And uh, we're still, like I say, getting caught up with things. The shovel head goes and sneezes. Everything stops to get it straightened out. So here we go. And I also noticed my, my throttle cable is starting to fray. So I'll have to order one of those tomorrow. And there's a power cable for your heated vest and maybe a coffee cup. Yeah, well, there's stuff coming. Yeah. Okay. And we're still going to get back on the flathead yes, motor, I are. promise. Yeah. And until next time, hey, I'll see you out on the road.